Before I begin, I want to acknowledge that the land I am currently occupying and the place this conference was supposed to take place on is the land of the Powhatan people. All environments are loaded with the violence of gender. Nikki Green. I look down at two buckets of clay. On the left is a gritty gray high fire clay, also known as stoneware. And on the right is a soft brown low fire terracotta clay named woman clay by the students. When I first became oriented to the ceramic studio as a place of making and learning, I was also coming to know about feminisms. I was learning to communicate with my hands the things that I did not know how to articulate with spoken language. Beyond the intimate and personal language of touch that one experiences within the tactility of clay, the spoken language was more literal and crude. I have come to know materials like clay as vibrant matter, matter that can change the user and be changed by the user. It helped me articulate the words before I had the language to talk about things like gender, sexism, and heterosexism. The materials were knowing and powerful. Through their use and misuse, I learned that language matters. I want to locate my identities before I continue. I am a femme, gender nonconforming queer person. I am Latinx and white. I am from a low or working class background, and I have been and will be in the future a disabled person. I will be drawing attention to a gender binary and how this binary is a violence that manifests in the ceramic studio in ways beyond our understanding of gender. Focusing on the ceramic studio and breaking down the gender violence in this specific context creates an example for this framework to be applied to other similar and different workspaces and communities. It is also a way for me to publicly record and give voice to this particular form of gender violence. Making vessels, mastery, kilns, and pottery. Gender violence also enables white supremacy, ableism, and sexism. The gender binary is applied to material and form. In this way of seeing, the feminine is the earth, the raw materials for creation, and the opposite of this is the masculine, as the application of form, shape, purpose, and idea. Male is the creator, the individual, the master who breathes life into the material with his seed. The female is the raw material, vast and open, waiting to be harvested, created, shaped into a masterpiece. Much of this can be rooted in patriarchal culture and Christian pseudobiology. Giving meaning or life to matter asserts that matter is void of meaning and dead. How do these views manifest in a ceramic studio where raw materials are harvested from the earth and transformed into objects and forms? Gender violences and white supremacy. The idea of the male as master and creator is both a gender violence and a manifestation of white supremacy. Looking at traditions of ceramic instruction, we can see that by using only the lineages of white men who are considered the fathers of ceramics, we are upholding white supremacy. Viewing only artists like Peter Volkus, Paul Soldiner, and Warren McKenzie, we would be ignoring the histories of people like Dave the Potter, an enslaved revolutionary ceramicist that gave the artist the Astor Gates an entry point to the ceramic studio. The Astor Gates asks, how do I enter the work of these big dudes? A sentiment that many other femme, gender nonconforming, or non-cis white male folks might share about the ceramics fathers like Volkus. At his 2014 Keystone Address at the National Council for the Education of the Ceramic Arts, or INSICA, titled Yamagachi Soul Manufacturing and a Potter Named Dave, The Need for Blackness Within Contemporary Ceramics, Gates talked about his first time at the INSICA conference in 1995, where he was one of five black people, two of which were workers at the hotel where the conference was held. Gender violence as sexism. 
Pottery is another example of gender violence. In pottery instruction, why are vessels referred to as female bodies? A pregnant pot full with a lip and a foot? All of the parts of a pot are actually named after uh, the human body, from the foot of the pot to the belly to the shoulder to the lip. If form follows function, we can understand that the form of this instruction functions to separate material from shape, and that we should follow this teaching to understand our place in the studio and in the world. When in fact, form and material are dependent on one another, the shape directly correlates to the texture, plasticity, and workability of the material. They are beautifully fluid, codependent attributes of vessel making. It is impossible to separate the two, and maybe we would be better served to understand material and form as one. Gender violence and ableism. The space for makers is one that requires the user to be agile, fit, and able to lift heavy materials and move in tight spaces. This is exemplified in this photo from a kiln room. If a pipe is placed so that way one needs to fit between an 11 inch gap in order to access the controls and to fire the kiln, the folks that will be able to use it will be limited. Materials which are stored in increments of 50 pounds or five gallon buckets are cumbersome and limit the users of the space. Quote, when disabled people get free, everyone gets free. Know that the daily practice of loving oneself is intertwined with any safe room, accessible chairs, ramp, both and. When they are there, they show our bodies that they belong, end quote. In the kiln room, gender can be policed through the passing down of knowledge. The know-how of how to fix or fire a kiln is passed down from man to man. This passing of knowledge can become interrupted, deemed inappropriate, or stopped when a student is femme, disabled, disliked, or different. Sar Ahmed asks, what happens when the study is not reproduced as a masculine domain by the collective repetition of deviation? Trans woman, Nikki Green uses the history and tradition of a kiln room to create a new queer analogy between a brick, a kiln brick, and a brick, a trans woman who does not pass. Green dismantled famous masculine artist Peter Volkus's kiln using the transitional kiln space at UC Berkeley to supply material for her work during her MFA. Outside the ceramic studio, the shaping of the field of ceramics is carried out beyond the ceramic studio. The current power structures of studios, galleries, and blogs leave little room for artists whose practices or identities are not white, cis, male, and able. In January of 2020, Garth Clark, who is one of the first ceramic gallery owners and academics to write about ceramics in the U.S., is also a person who wears other hats, like art critic, art historian, curator, gallerist, and art dealer. This year, Clark wrote an article published on his magazine-turned-online blog, C-File, titled Top 15 Male Artists, Ceramics in Fine Arts. Clark attempts to highlight the field's top artists in a series of two lists, one with the top men, followed by a list for the top women. What Clark actually highlights is his own transphobic, binary way of seeing the field, a perspective that is shared by many others. In distinguishing between the top male artists and the top female artists, Clark states, quote, We have two lists, one for men and one for women. This will cause a lot of criticism, but without this separation, only a few women would make it to the top 15, not because they are lesser as artists, but because the market still discriminates, end quote. This first binary is transphobic and sexist and excludes gender nonconforming people. Clark also makes a distinction between clay, unfired, and ceramic, works that are fired or sintered. He writes, quote, Note that artists working in clay are not included in this list. Unfired clay is not ceramics. 
they will be explored in forthcoming lists, not gender-based, end quote. This idea of permanence and strength that places a value on the more durable, fired ceramic material is from a, quote, historically masculinized epistemology of mastery, end quote. This also can exclude artists that don't have access to a kiln because of cost, exclusion, or because of the ableist design of kiln rooms. Artist Julia half Candell wrote a response becoming the first person I know to publicly criticize Clark. She says, quote, Until recently, I have not publicly spoken out about these types of issues within the relatively small ceramics world, believing instead that I should spend my time addressing wider audiences and larger issues. In a sense, I gave up and accepted that the ceramics world will always be closed-minded and predominantly value white male artists and educators. But that is bullshit. I call bullshit on myself for my silence, and I call bullshit on you for this kind of journalism. I understand that you think this method of gender separation is helpful. I want to explain it is not. You're essentially saying, this is the way things are, but we don't want to leave women out completely, end quote. Creating these binaries leaves out every person, idea, and object in between. How could Clark include gender nonconforming performance artist Castles on this list? Half Kendall goes on to say, quote, I also take issue with the way you create a binary between ceramics and fine arts. If ceramics as a genre wants to be accepted into the so-called art world, which I would argue has already happened and has been happening for over a decade now, we need to realize that the future of art is not defined by medium. End quote. A transitional ceramics practice, studio, or space. In speaking of his own practice, the Astor Gates asks, how much can we dream and still go to Potter's heaven? In imagining an expansive practice for the field, there needs to be literal and metaphoric flex space, spaces that are in flux or transitionary, spaces that are able to accommodate more than one kind of body, more than one kind of subjectivity. It is in these spaces of imagination and flexibility that are imperative to combating ableism, sexism, and racism in the studio. If we see the spaces or material as monopurpose with only one correct way of using them, then we are creating a binary, a right and wrong way, a right and wrong body. I want to draw a link between transfeminism and ceramics as an interdisciplinary or transdisciplinary ceramics practice. Similarly, as the concept or practice of intersectional feminism existed before Crenshaw coined the term, I don't want to pretend that a transdisciplinary ceramics practice does not exist and is not already represented by countless artists in the art world. I will, however, posit that the transdisciplinary ceramics practice is largely ignored by the, quote, ceramics field. Recognized or not within the field of ceramics, artists like Anna Mendieta, The Astor Gates, Simone Lee, and castles are powerhouses on the outskirts of the ceramics field. Their work overlaps with photography, social practice, sculpture, and performance, respectively. For the purpose of explaining this point, I will define the ceramics field as the interactions within the siloed ceramics studios at universities and conferences, places that teach a colonial view of ceramics and one that considers ceramics as part of the larger art world, but as also separate and unaffiliated with other areas like sculpture, land art, performance, or photography. Isolating ceramics as its own field brings opportunities for gatekeeping and control. A transdisciplinary ceramic studio would offer opportunities for more connections. It would begin to build and expand our understanding of the material, processes, and histories. A transdisciplinary ceramic studio is a polyculture versus a monoculture. The bodies in the space act as enforcers, holding up the walls, taking up the space, letting some bodies enter, some bodies feel comfortable, and others as outsiders, unwelcome or left to fight for their space. 
The shaping of these spaces happened before they were ever built or occupied, but they can undergo changes. They can be shaped and reshaped by past, current, and future occupants. Kilns being dismantled, imaginative flux spaces, or even wheels being added to buckets changes the space and creates possibilities for new users.